All righty, good morning. Good to see everybody in the house of God today. On this Lord's Day, God has given us another day, another opportunity to uh, be in the house of God, and we're glad to see you here today. And if you're a first-time visitor with us, we want to welcome you to our service today, and we're glad you're here. We're glad everybody's here uh, today, and uh, I hope you're glad to be here today. Amen. A lot of other places you could have been. Uh, and, uh, but um, God will bless you today. And if you're listening to us today, by the way, of live stream, we're glad to have you in with us today as well. We gather to worship God. Amen. Uh, he is worthy of our praise. And he takes care of us and watches over us and gives us far more than we ever deserve. And, uh, and so he deserves praise. And so we should be honoring him today. And you are. You're honoring him with your presence in the house of God. So put a smile on her face. Stay awake. And, uh, and let's, let's serve the Lord. Amen. And uh, let him know that we are glad to be. You know what? I guarantee you he's glad you're here. Now he wants to see you glad to be here. Amen. And uh, not because you feel obligated, but because you want, wanted to. Amen. There's a big difference between being obligated and wanting to. Amen. Amen. So good to see you. Glad you're here. We're going to sing uh, an old red back hymnal song. How do you like my red back hymnal? Huh? And uh, uh, I like my red back hymnal now. Uh, but a lot of great songs in this book. And so we're going to sing one. You've sung it before. So let's stand together and sing Everybody Will Be Happy Over There. Isn't that a song for today? Everybody Will Be Happy Over There. Where the saved of earth shall soon the glory share Where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore Everybody will be happy over there Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there We will shout and sing His praise Fathers, sisters, brothers will be singing round the throne In that land where no one ever knows a care And the Christians of all ages doing the triumph song Everybody will be happy over there Everybody will be happy praying and a mourning in that land for no burdens will their ever bear all the people will be singing glory glory to the land everybody will be happy over there everybody will be happy will be happy over there there will meet the one who saved us who kept us by his grace and who brought us through that land so bright and fair we will praise his name forever as we look upon his face everybody will be happy over there everybody will be happy will be happy over there we will shout and sing his praise everybody will be happy over there 
Amen. Isn't that good? We need a little shot of happiness today anyway. Amen. Boy, just think about that. Uh, you, you think, when you think about, about that land that he has gone to prepare for them that love him, you know, all this stuff that we're, we're enduring on this side of eternity is not welcome over there. Amen. All this bad news and up and down news and, and all this mess. Uh-uh. No, no media. will be no media there. Amen. That's right. No media to, 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 to lead us the long, wrong way. Amen. I will start preaching this morning. But nonetheless, bless God, everybody. You know why? Because everybody that will be there has been born again. Amen. Amen. They've had a change. Uh, something's took place. Uh, and uh, that got them in that land so bright and fair. Amen. So praise God. Praise God today. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We want to thank Him for His grace and mercy. Thank Him for watching over us, helping us, guiding us, leading us, protecting us. And we want to pray for those sick today. I want you to pray uh, today for those that has this virus. You know, we don't downplay the virus. It's a real thing. There's people sick, and we need to pray for them. As we said in Sunday school this morning, those, especially those that are lost. Amen. To have the virus is bad, but to be lost and have it is awful. Amen. You'll see that we need to pray for them. Let's pray for our folks that are sick. Brother Oscar Dishner, can you continue to pray for him? And uh, uh, Tony Bell in the hospital today. And pray for Sue and the family. Pray for them today. Pray for each other. Pray for our nation. We're getting close to election time. And we just need to, what we need to do is we narrow down to election day. Don't listen this way. Listen that way. Amen. And talk to God. And let God guide us. For that's what he does. Through the Holy Spirit, he guides you and I in the way we should go, what we should do. So let's pray in that direction. And ask for God's help. And be sure you thank God for his help. Amen. So let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, oh, dear God, we thank you, Lord, for helping us. God, for meeting with us another day. Lord, you brought us through this week. Father, you helped us and protect us. Lord, you gave us strength and you gave us ability. And Father, you have been good to us. So, Father, we want to take a moment and just praise your holy name for loving us and caring for us. Thank you for these today in the house of God. Pray God a blessing upon them. Those, Lord, that's listening by the way of live stream today, I pray for them, God, and their prayer requests, whatever it may be. I know there's burdens on every heart in this room. And, Father, we've got heaviness that's all around. But, Father, you told us, and we read it Friday, that you will give us joy for heaviness. The joy of gladness for our heaviness. So God, thank you for a joy in our heart today that the world cannot take away. Father, we pray for those that are sick today, those troubled, those fighting this virus, God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to heal them, especially today if one would be lost and have this virus. Oh, God, save them, Father, that they might be redeemed. Lord, we thank you that you can be redeemed today. And I thank you, Lord, that I know I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb of God. Lord, I pray for our people that are sick. I pray for Tony Bell today, Oscar Dishner. Lord, you'll help them and others, Lord, that may be suffering today. Thank you for these gathered here today. Father, save a lost soul somewhere today. May the word of God go forth. We pray for the churches, Lord, that are having to make hard decisions. We thank you for those who took a stand for, for them, for their right. And God help us, Father, to be faithful. Help us, God, to be determined and bold. Lord, to obey the word of God. And Lord, to be uh, examples that we serve God. Father, forgive us of our sin. Thank you again for your help. Help us this morning. Help the word of God. Lord, how I need your help today. As we step into difficult ground today. But, Lord, it so fits the day in which we live. Father, God, help us. Bless those that are saying. Thank you for those helping today. Lord, Brother Gary, Louise, Lord, those working 
live stream, the sound booth. Lord, as many hands helps out today. We thank you for them, Lord. and Thank you for these that are gathered here. Lord, bless us, help us, meet with us. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. We're going to have the Maze girls come, and they're going to sing for us this morning. So you pray for them. A lot of our young people are having to leave for school. Uh, many of them here today will be uh, leaving. Some of them's already left for college and, and school. You pray for them and because uh, they're going out into a troubled world, a world uh, just full of all kinds of stuff. But you pray for them. They'll be leaving this week, right? You all leaving this week? Thursday, and uh, they'll be uh, going down to Pensacola uh, to go, huh? And Grace and and I see other, but I see Eric back there. How many how many how many young people got here going going to be leaving for college? Hold your hand up. You're staying. Well, that's good. Commuted. Well, Amen. Well, I pray for him too. Hey, he's going to be on the road. You know, we get, these young people need our prayers. Amen. And uh, as they go to school, some of them's done gone. I know uh, Devin's already gone, right? He's at school, and and uh, some be leaving this week. Pray for them. Amen. We was talking about it in Sunday school. The world's not the same as when we went places. And so we need to pray. But I believe in praying hedge of protection. I believe that. And uh, uh, my Allison commutes back and forth. And, you know, we need to pray for them. Uh, for protection on the road because there's crazy people in West Virginia. <laughs> amen. And uh, we have, uh, amen. Uh, uh, you know, and so, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not one of them. Who said that? <laughs> anyway, uh, bless the Lord. Amen. You pray for these girls as they sing.
right, if everyone will stand, please. We're going to sing Standing on the Promises. Please stand. the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, Standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord. Bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Thank you. you may be seated. Amen. No better place to stand today, is there, than to stand on the promises of God. And I hope that's what you're standing on day. Well, these girls are going to sing again for us, but before they do, I want to tell you today, and you're giving uh, the dollar for mission. This past week, we initiated the Master's Basket, and uh, the Master's Basket is operated uh, here. Uh, uh, well, Margaret, for a long time, has operated the Master's Basket, and she has asked to step down from that, and uh, Margaret done a fabulous job, uh, but due to circumstances, she need to step out, and so Sister Jean Dunn has gladly stepped up to take that. So amen. Isn't that great? And uh, so many of you all participate in the Master's Basket, and it takes a little bit of money to run the Master's Basket. It's one of the ministries of the church. And so today, your dollar for missions, that's what it's going to go to, okay, to help the Master's Basket when needed and when used. It's not used every time, but it's used occasions on occasions. And so, uh, we, uh, so we need to have that fund and so if, if you want to be added to that list she has a list am i correct about that gene if you want to be added to that list to help you see gene done and she'll add you to it okay and so we appreciate gene taking charge of that participate appreciate you participate and helping with that as well so dollar for missions as you leave today will be to help build that fund back up in the master's basket okay girls you all One would think that it was strange to be clutching an old shoe. 
Unless you knew all the days of doubt and fear it brought her through. At times when she would feel so unworthy of his name, that's when she'd go and find the shoe and and remember once again he had found her in his field, this poor stranger to his race. But in his heart she soon had found a very special place. He longed to give her rest, knowing well what he must do. He gladly paid the purchase price confirmed by that old shoe. It's more than just an old shoe. It's a to- token of his grace, reminding her of his great love and the price that her redeemer paid, assuring her that she can endure whatever she will face. It's more than just an old shoe, it's a token of his grace. Weathered and it's worn, it's old but tried and true. And some have said it's out of style, and I need something new. But the comfort that it gives tells me nothing else will do. It's brought me much too far to cast aside like an old shoe. It's more than just an old book, it's a token of His grace, reminding me of His great love and the price that my Redeemer paid, assuring me that I can endure whatever I will face. It's more than just an old book, it's a token of His grace. One would think that it was strange to be clutching an old shoe unless you knew all the days of doubt and fear it brought her through. Amen. Thank you, young ladies. That song, those songs today, amen, token of God's grace, amen. Well, how important it is today for us to know the grace of a loving God, more so than ever, amen. Revelation chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12, last week we, we were in the first part of this chapter and uh, there's a lot of controversy when you study the Word of God, especially prophecy. When things are going to happen and the time frame of things, it's hard sometimes to know all that. But we're in the Great Tribulation period. Now, I was asked, when exactly does the Great Tribulation period? I can't really answer that. We're in, in and about this time we're in, somewhere right here the, begins that period of the Great Tribulation. Now, I believe it begins back... Uh, uh, with the seventh trumpet. Some folks will argue with that. But, uh, you know, you have your opinion, I have mine. And the Word of God is, you know, we, there's some things we take as the Word of God says. Amen? And uh, we're not going to get in a tug-of-war match over when exactly it starts. Uh, I can just tell you, it will start. And you don't want to be here. Amen? And you don't have to be here. And so, uh, that's all you need to know. Right? And if you're not ready to go, then you need to get ready to go. Because this, what we've been preaching out of Revelation, you do not, as a child of God, you will not be here. Understand that? What I want you to understand is there is people that are going to face this trying time. There are people that must go through this trying time. There'll be people that will be saved in this trying time. 
and it is a trying time. But nonetheless, what is our job? Our job is to be praying and getting people saved and getting the word of God out. You know, it's not time now, church, to quit. Now's the time more than ever you are to be proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even though there, it's not a popular thing, and by the way, it's never been a popular thing. Amen. Those people has died uh, in the past because they preached the word of God. There's people that's dying today because they're preaching the word of God. Amen. You see, the word of God is rich and it's powerful and it's alive and that's what makes it so, uh, so, so, so many people on the attack of it. Today, we go, now last week if you were here, we went, we had that war in heaven. Now we're gonna go to war, on, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we had the war on the earth. Now we're gonna go to the war in heaven. I've got them backwards. Last week we had war on the earth and this week now war in heaven. And we're gonna begin in verse seven and I wanna read verse number seven and we're gonna go down through about verse uh, 12, 13, verse 13 uh, this morning in our reading. Let's, let's read the word of God beginning in chapter 12 and verse number 7 and through verse 12. The Bible says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out that that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the power, by, I'm sorry, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast Unto the earth he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Heavenly Father, Lord, you help us today as we try to understand what the Word of God tells us. But most of all, God, we pray that you'll get our hearts ready for the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to get others ready, Father, to help them understand that this is a real. The Bible is real. These days are real. And these things are we're living in, in this very moment is real. They are a sign for us, Father, to begin to trust you more than ever. Lord, help us today. We ask in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Last week, uh, we, we understood, we, we began, we saw the war that took place on earth between the woman and the dragon. You know, we told you the woman is Israel. And the, and the child that she would give birth to would be Christ Jesus, our Lord. It was the devil, has always been the devil's goal from the very time to wipe out the Lord Jesus Christ, to wipe out the nation of Israel, because it's the blessing. By the way, you go back and read the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, chapter 12, God promised a blessing upon the nation of Israel, and he promised to bless those that would bless them and curse them that would bless, that curse them. Let me tell you what, what he said in essence Israel will not be defeated. Israel will win and God's hand is upon them. You and I make ready that Satan cannot and will not destroy God's plan. I don't care what they say. Amen. And I don't care how many people are saying we're gonna wipe that nation out. Uh, don't you believe one word of it because God's done said they cannot and will not do it. God has a place for them and we saw last week God's hand is upon them. Now, war begins to break out in heaven. The Bible says in verse seven, and there was war in heaven. When Israel flees to the wilderness, the place that God has of protection for them, war is going to break out in the heavens. Now look at this. Michael, 
Michael's mentioned here. Let me tell you who Michael is. Michael is the archangel. And, and the battle is going to be between Michael and, and his angels, which are the unfallen angels. They're going to set battle against the dragon, which is Satan, and the fallen angels. Now, I want you to understand who Michael is. Michael is the warrior angel that has been assigned to protect the nation of Israel. You see, he shows up to protect the nation of Israel. He's their warrior angel. And so he's going to show up now as the battle's going to kick in a ray up in the heavens between Michael and the unfallen angels and between Satan and the fallen angels. Now we have to go back to, to Daniel for just a little bit this morning to understand what's going on here. Daniel, by the way, and book of Revelation go together. So you almost have to study them together to understand what is happening. And there's some things I think you must see in the book of Daniel this morning to understand not only in what's coming in the future, but what is actually happening in the very day in which you and I live. Can I tell you something? What you're encountering and what you're seeing in our world today just didn't come by mere accident, just didn't show up. There's no accident with God. God knows exactly what he's doing. And what we're under today, God already knew what was going to happen. It's to open our eyes, church, and realize that we got a God that's still in charge. We got a God that still knows what he's doing. We got a God that still has us in the palm of his hand. We got a God that still died for us. We got a God that still loves us. We got a God that still, somebody help me this morning. We got a God that's still on our side. Wake up. Amen. Get out of spiritual sleep. Get out of the devil's clutches. Get in your Bible and start praising God. Amen. Huh? You see, here comes the war in heaven. Bless God. I'm glad God's got warrior angels. Amen. I'm glad God knows how to fight the battle. Amen. I'm glad God knows exactly what's going on. <laughs> hey, so here we go. Daniel chapter 12 and verse number one. It's important that we see these verses. The Bible says in verse one, matter of fact, let me, uh, I was gonna read it off my notes, but I think I'll go with the Bible. It just sounds better for reading out of the Bible. Amen. Uh, Daniel, matter of fact, we're gonna spend a little bit of time here in the book of Daniel probably more time than I need to, but, but anyway, it's important. In Daniel chapter 12 and verse number one, and at that time, the Bible says, shall Michael stand up? And the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even until that same time. You know what he's saying? You think we got troubles now? You think you got troubles now? There is troubles are coming. Amen. Such as the nations has never seen in their lifetime. Such as has never been felt before. There's trouble coming. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we, hey, we need to get people ready for that. And at that time, he says, uh, and at that time thy people shall be delivered Every one, amen, that shall be found written in the book. Now, let me tell you something, how important it is uh, to know the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. You see, this Michael, this warrior angel is gonna stand up and fight for the nation of Israel. Gonna stand up and fight. And by the way, he's gonna win the battle, amen, because God's on his side. Amen. Now, I want you to understand, and Pastor Mays, not too long ago, uh, from this very pulpit, done a wonderful job giving you a sermon, a series on the Antichrist and this, this spirit of deception that's going on in our world today. And by the way, you are living in a day of deception. 
You are living in a day of lies. You are living in a day when your very government is lying to you. You're living in a day when, when the media, your very media, that one time you could trust is lying to you. You're living in the day of deception. Be not deceived. We don't have to be deceived. We're on the winning side. God is on our side. You don't have to listen to the lies going around. Amen. You don't have to be deceived. You've got the Bible. You don't have, come on. Listen, Facebook's not the Bible. Amen. Don't believe what somebody puts on Facebook, my goodness. Some people treat Facebook as the Bible. Amen. Preacher of the world's going to end tomorrow. How do you know? Well, that's what so and so on Facebook said. Huh. Yeah? We're in a we're in trouble. Preacher, I know. How do you know? Because Facebook said. <laughs> huh. uh, that's our problem today. Amen. But I want to tell you something to you. As he discussed this Antichrist, and by the way. And I know what a lot of people's attitude is. And I guess it's okay to have that attitude. But you can say, well, I'm a Christian and I'm going to leave here at the rapture and I don't have to face the Antichrist. I won't even know who the Antichrist is and uh, I'm not worried about it. Hold it. Whoa. You say, There's some truth in that because you'll be gone by the time the Antichrist rises to power. Amen. We'll not be here. The rapture takes place in Revelation chapter 4. He doesn't arise till after that. But let's bounce back into 2020. When the spirit of Antichrist is in our very midst. Amen. The spirit of Antichrist, that deception of Antichrist is in our very day in which we live. We are not exempt because we are Christians today from the spirit of the Antichrist. He's deceiving even the very elect. He's deceiving people today. And people are turning the other way because they're believing the lies of the devil. Daniel, there's a spirit of Antichrist. I want you to go back in the book of Daniel to chapter number seven. Here in Daniel chapter number seven, I begin to study this a little bit. Here we have Daniel's dream of the four beasts. You remember? And I'm not gonna get into all of that, but there's one verse that I think stands out to fit in the day in which we live today. There's one verse that I think we could set right down in the world on this uh, 23rd day of August 2020 and it's verse 25 pay attention to what this verse says he's speaking now of the Antichrist he's speaking uh, he's speaking here of the Antichrist but I want you to remember the spirit of Antichrist for the Bible says in verse 25 and he shall speak great words against the most high now, let's stop just a minute. Let's bounce into our world today. Are they speaking words against the Most High? Are they saying words against your Savior? Are they condemning the blood of Calvary? Are they speaking against the cross? You better believe it. And it's becoming more readily available and it's becoming louder the farther we go. They're speaking against the church. They're speaking against preaching the Bible. They're speaking against our God. And that says, this Antichrist, he shall speak great words against the Most High. Let me tell you, that's going to happen in the tribulation. That's happening in the very moment in which you live. They're speaking against God, shaking their fist at God. Let's see. Now let's read on in that verse. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Let me tell you something today. There's nothing wearing out the saints more than what's going on in 2020. Amen. It's wearing the saints out. It's wearing the preachers out. It's, hey, hey we were frustrated and we're worried and people are, people are, are uh, wrecked with fear and we're wearing out. You know what? 
Here's what I believe. I believe that this virus was sent our way by Satan to wire out the saints. Amen. We got a lot of people wore out. We got a lot of people that's just about threw in the towel. Many has threw in the towel under the name of disease. Come on. Amen. They've got us so scared, they got us too scared to breathe. Amen. You see, you say, well, preacher, it's real. Yeah, it's real. Well, your God's real. Amen. Listen, if, he can, if they can invoke fear in us, fear will drive us crazy. To wear out the saints of God. The news is different every day. Amen. What rules we got today will change in the morning. Amen. We'll have a new set of rules tomorrow because somebody else come down with a disease. Hello? Then we'll wore out. We're changing everything. We've got to go back and change all our rules. We've got to go back and change what we're going to do. And then Tuesday morning, we've got to change it again. And Wednesday morning, we'll have to change it again. You see, they're wearing out the people. Wearing out the saints. That's exactly what the devil wants. He wants us wore out. Amen. Well, so wear us out. Let's look on. Look, he's not done. Let's go on in this verse. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Oh, and here's one. And think to change times and laws. Does that not happen when we live? Huh? They've changed everything. They've changed everything. You know, the stores change their open hours. Huh? <laughs> Changing the times. But not only changing the times, let's just change the law too. That's like where Satan's working today. He's causing changes all around us and, and disturbing our way of life, disturbing what's normal for us. You hear this all the time. When are we going to get back to normalcy? When are we going to get back to something normal? I don't know when that is. I high time think it's time we make up our mind and get back to normal. Amen. Get back to the word of God. Get back to what God has said because the devil will wire us out. Oh yeah. He'll seek to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand. What I'm afraid of today is we're slowly handing it all over to the devil. Amen. In the name of fear. In the name of, uh-oh, I can't do that. Now, I'm not trying to be mean. Don't get me wrong. I come to you as a pastor with a heavy heart as I watch people. I see people all the time. Won't come to church, but I see them everywhere else. Amen. Amen. The virus is just not contained in these walls, folks. It's everywhere you go. Amen. So, leave that where it's at, preacher. Let's go on. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 13, the Bible says, but the prince, I notice this, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia. You know who that is? That's Satan. And this is Daniel speaking now. Daniel is about to go to, an, to a fast. You know, in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel's going to fast for 21 days. He's seeking an answer. He's seeking God's help uh, to understand what he's seeing. And he's wanting God's guidance and God's help. So Daniel's going to fast. He's going to fast 21 days. But I want you to notice something that is said here. Beginning in, in, in verse number 13. Well, let's, let's back up a little bit, maybe and read a couple of verses. Um, then, let's look at verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. Now, what did he just say? On day one, Daniel, I heard your prayer. The very first day you prayed and the very first time you started fasting, I heard your prayer. 
Now notice. It says, And from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But, but, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Twenty-one days. Below Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. What's he saying? What I'm trying to get through your head this morning is that Satan is a real thing. And Satan is real in our world today. Now people say, well, why does God allow this? God allows things to happen for you and I. For our benefit. To bring us closer to God. To bring us to our knees. To bring us a realization that we need God's help. God could snap his finger and Satan could be gone. Amen? He doesn't do that. You see, what he's telling Daniel here, Daniel, from day one that I began, that you began to pray, I heard your prayer. I sent your prayer, but it, something got withstood. In other words, Satan showed up. Amen? By the way, can I tell you, Satan wants to block our prayers. He wants to block our access to the throne of God. But Dan, and, and Daniel had to stop right there. He would have been blocked. But the Bible says he fasted 21 days. And then Michael showed up and fought for him. And guess what? Got his answer. What I'm trying to tell you, church, is when trouble comes our way, it's not time to quit. It's time to keep moving on. For we have somebody on our side. We have somebody contending for us. We have somebody fighting for us. We have somebody watching over us. Amen? Or we may have burdens and we may have trials and things may come, but God has never left us. God will never forsake us. I believe we got warrior angels that are on our side that'll be, that'll be rushed out to help us in the time that God appoints. Jude, Jude verse nine, the Bible says, yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, he disputed. With the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Does not bring against him a red an accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. You see, Michael, Michael was not allowed here in, in Jude to pronounce judgment on Satan, but uh, he told him, Just hold on, God will rebuke thee. God will take care of him. Amen. But in the tribulation, where we're at now, in the tribulation, Michael will defeat Satan. And notice what it says, back to our text now, in Revelation chapter 12. And I want you to notice what it says as we continue through here. In verse number eight. The Bible says, and prevailed not, Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. Satan was cast out of heaven. He lost his exalted position. Uh, you know, back you go back to Isaiah. I trust my memory, fourteen, I think it is, where Satan loses his, his exalted position. He's cast out of heaven, but at that point, he still has access to the throne. You won't believe me? Go read the book of Job where he's accusing the brethren. He's now called the accuser of the brethren. Amen. For before the throne, I've said this before, before the throne of God, even this very day, Satan's showing up accusing you of something. Accusing you of a bad thought you had this morning. Accusing you of something you may have said. Maybe you had some road rage today and Satan's reminding God of how awful you acted this morning. Amen. He still has access to the throne of God. But we're seeing in this chapter, God gets tired of it. Amen. And he's going to be booted out permanently. 
Yeah. You see, but here in verse 8, Satan will no longer have a place in heaven. He will no longer have access to the throne. It is at this time God's had enough and God will cast him out of heaven. Michael will defeat him and they will cast him to the earth never to have access to the throne of God again. Amen? Never. This point, now what has happened, this angers him. Let's look at verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So now, at this time in the uh, the tribulation period, Satan's going to be cast out out of heaven onto the earth, and the angels with him. And now, all chaos is going to break out. Because Satan knows this. At this time, I only have a short time. I only have a short time before God permanently does away with me. By the way, does Satan know that? Yes, he does. He knows exactly what's going to happen. He knows this Bible better than anybody does. But what's his job? What was his job? His job is to deceive. His job is to make you not believe the Bible. And if he can get you to quit believing the Bible... He's got you where he wants you. Amen. He's got you where he wants you. If he can judge, because he believes the Bible. He knows what's going to happen. He knows he's bound for hell. He knows he's, he's, he's going to be put out of business. But do you know that? Does this world know that? So now, right now, this very day, he's working his deceiving powers. We see that great dragon permanently cast out of heaven. The old serpent. The Bible calls the old serpent. You go back to the Garden of Eden. Genesis chapter 3 and 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the the field. Amen. The word devil means slander or accuser of the brethren. And uh, the word Satan means adversary. What did Peter say? 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the what? The devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So we don't have to wonder who it is that got thrown out of heaven. It was Satan himself. And he no longer has access to the throne of God. Now, in our scripture, verse 10, they start rejoicing in heaven. Amen. Hey, can I tell you what? Now we're going to go now to verse 10. And we're going to jump up here, and John's going to hear the rejoicing in heaven. Look here. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God. How, how much? Day and night, they're celebrating in heaven. I believe they made an announcement. Satan's no longer got any access up here. Hey, bless God. He's been thrown out. Let's just shout to glory. Let me tell you something. Bless God, you ought to be shouting today that Satan has no power over your soul. Amen. You ought to be shouting glory to God in the highest that I'm born again. I found Jesus along the way. Satan may trouble me. He may break me. But bless God, he cannot have me. Hey, he cannot win. He will not win. Hey, he's a loser from the beginning. He was alive from the start. And he's going to lose this thing. That ought to bring a shout out of somebody today. Bless God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. He cannot and will not win. They were shouting in heaven when he got out of their presence. Amen. Amen. Woo! That's right. Hey, we ought to shout just as loud. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. He's not welcome here. Amen. Rejoicing in heaven because Satan no longer has access. He will be banished from their presence forever. And there'll be no more evil. 
No more accusing. No more accusing of the brethren in heaven. Anyway, isn't that right? Come on. Stay with me. Now, but before, Satan is going to make every effort. Once he's cast out into the, unto the earth, no more access to heaven, he's going to make every effort now to destroy him. He's going to make every effort to destroy God and to destroy the kingdom of God and to destroy the people of God. It's going to turn loose, you see, in great wrath upon this earth. In the short time he has left, he's going to make every effort to destroy God and his people. Verse 11, the Bible says, and they overcame him. Now, here you go, boy. Uh, How did they win the battle? Notice what it says. And they overcame him, not by their power, but by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Hey, by the power of God. And also, that's something else. And by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. Bless God. Notice what he's saying. The saints in heaven rejoicing. They have won the victory, not by their own means, but by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Christ, who came and died to seek and to save that which was lost. When he shed his blood, the victory was won for everyone that will call upon the name of the Lord. You have won the battle. You have won the victory. Bless God. Hallelujah. Hey, blood, I can't stand it. I can't handle it. I just don't know I'm going to bust. Hey, bless God. Amen. We've overcame. We're winners. Act like a winner. Act like you're winning. Somebody. Amen. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. Huh, huh, huh. What does that mean? It means their confession that Jesus Christ is indeed the blood of the Lamb. He is the Lamb. Amen. And not only that, but their willingness to give their lives because of the Lamb. Amen. And those that are in heaven at this time, most of them are martyred because they were there. The church was, has been resurrected has been raptured and the martyr saints are there and those that have died in the tribulation period, the saints are there. You see, they gave their lives for the gospel. They gave their lives for the blood of the lamb. Amen. I wonder how many of us today are ready to die for the lamb. How many of us are ready to give up our lives for the cause of Jesus Christ? Is that what we got to do, preacher? I don't know. I'm asking you, are you willing? So they come in here and say, oh, the claim's Jesus. And by the way, it's happened. They went in churches and said, oh, the claim's Jesus. Stand up. We're going to kill you. I wonder how many of us stand up. I wonder how many of us will stand up and say, I claim Jesus. I claim Jesus today. You'll say, well, it'll never come to us. I hope not. But you look where we're going and where we're headed, church. Satan is alive and he's working big time. Why? Because he only has a short time. Amen. He only has a short time left that he can do anything. How about done? Verse 12. Verse 12 says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Satan, Satan, one of these days is going to make this earth a bloodbath. Amen? Read the book of Revelation. We'll get there eventually. 
He's going to make it a bloodbath. I'm glad to know today that I'm going to leave here in the rapture. Well, what is coming for the child of God? You say, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Praise God. You'll leave one of these days. But what happens between now and the day of leaving? Amen. What are we going to have to do? What decisions are we going to have to make? What are we going to have to face? I'm glad to know that the redeemed church will be spared from this that we're reading. And then we got somebody fighting for us. Amen. Daniel 12, 1 again, and at the same time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even unto that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, and every one, every one that shall be found written in the book. We finish this chapter up, we go back to war on the earth again. This war took place in heaven. Can I tell you, one of these days, church, we are going to come back. You see, we're going to be raptured out of here. But we're going to come back. But see, when we come back this time, we're we going to be coming following the warrior king. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And he will fight our battle for us. Amen. So what does that mean, preacher? That means you're in a battle right now. Do you understand we are in a spiritual battle in the world in which we live today? How many of you understand you're in a battle today? You're in a battle over that Bible you're holding in your hand. You're in a battle over worshiping God or not. We're in a battle. Are we ready to fight? Are we ready to stand up with a banner of the cross, a blood-stained cross in our hand, holding our Bible up high, proud of what God has given us? Are we going to retreat to the enemy? I thank God for people. I see across our nation preachers that have took a stand especially in California. I saw uh, John MacArthur, you've been following him some. They're in church today, or they will be, and they're behind us a little bit. And they told him not to go. Preacher, there's a, where, do, where, do, where is there that we begin to disobey the law when the law disobeys the Bible? Amen. When the law disobeys our access to God. Amen. Oh, don't get mad at me. Please don't get mad at me. Because that's what happens. I'll get hate mail. I'll get hate email, I'm sure, by the time this day's out. But I'm here to tell you, it's high time. And we realize we're in a war. And we go to Ephesians chapter 6. And what does it say for us to do? To put on the whole armor of God. A half-dressed soldier is a dead soldier. Amen. We need to put the whole armor on and get behind the king and begin to fight the battle with the king because I've read the book, we win. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for helping us today. Lord, thank you, Lord, for meeting with us this morning. God, I pray you'll stir every heart today. If somebody's here lost, dear God, I pray they'll be saved. Oh, God, if somebody's here indifferent, Lord, help them to get on the winning side, to get on the fighting side. And Lord, make us strong soldiers. 
for Jesus Christ today. Dear God, help us this morning. Lord, we're facing things we've never faced before. But oh God, we need your help. And Lord, I pray somebody needs to come and pray, they'll come. If somebody just needs a, a little dose of extra help, they'll get it uh, this morning. Lord God, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Heads bowed and eyes closed as Louise plays today. We're not going to sing. I want you today to begin to do business with God. And if you're here today and you can't say, Preacher, I'm not for sure I'm saved. I sure, I sure don't want to go through what you're talking about. And I sure don't want to go to hell. Because after all of this is hell. Won't you come today? Come and meet us here. And we'll get that settled up. You can leave here living on the winning side, ready for the rapture. But maybe you're here today. You're saved. First of all, you'll thank God for that. That's a gift. But you've got something troubling you. Or Satan has troubled you. Or Satan has caused doubts and fears. Satan has caused you to go backwards in the walk with God. Why not ask God to help you? Why not ask God to be your strength today? Give you that that you need. Maybe you've got somebody that's lost. And if the, if the trumpet sounded today, they would remain here on this earth why not call their name out to God today and say God save their soul oh God I'm begging you to save their soul there's power in that today as she plays we're going to pray if you want to come to the altar and pray you come if you want me to pray with you I'll pray with you we'll ask for God's help if you need to be saved don't let Satan win today. You defeat him by the word of God and by the blood of the Lamb. That's what they were shouting about in heaven. They had won. They had won. So you come today. Let's, let's take a moment and pray. People are praying at the altar. Aren't you glad today that burdens are lifted at Calvary? We carry burdens. Burdens are there. You know, we could have a burden before the, the, the day's out. But aren't you glad there's a place where they're lifted? Sometimes they're not completely gone, but He can lift them just enough 
to give us a smile for the day, to give us a, a time of rest. That's what God does. He lifts our burdens. Paul p- prayed that his thorn in the flesh would be taken away. Never was. But I believe it was lifted some that he could go on and do what he had to do. Burdens will not be gone until we get out of here. Amen. Then our burdens are gone. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Well, ain't God good? Amen. Been good to us. Well, let me see. Uh, I do want to say this uh, to you uh, concerning the uh, church website. It is up and running. And so many of y'all, if you don't have um, Facebook, some people say, Preacher, I don't do Facebook. And, uh, uh, and I can't catch the lessons and so. But if you've got a, access to the Internet, you can now go to the church website. And under the Connect, I think it's Connect. Anyway, you'll find where it says Watch Online. They, they are keeping those, uh, like last Wednesday's Bible studies on there. Uh, this service will probably be on there sometime. I don't know if we'll make it today or not, but the next couple of days it will be put on there. So you can go back and catch them if you've not been able to. And I would encourage you to keep up with the Bible study. We started in the book of Jeremiah. And uh, so if you can't be here, you can catch it there if you can have access to the Internet. And that's you, our website is on the front of that bulletin. And so... Uh, you try that and see if that helps you. And, uh, of course, the, the, the services are on there. There are some minor things we got to fix and correct, but, but most of what you need is on there. And so it is up and running today. Online giving is on there as well. Some folks just ask about it, and I think it's up and running as well too. So you'll find different things on that uh, website. And uh, um, I do have this card of thanks that I want to read, and it says, Thank you so much. For the Bible, it will be cherished for a long time and passed down uh, uh, down to our, through our family, uh, to our church family and friends. Your card, your prayers and cards, and your thoughtfulness touched our hearts. Thank you, the family of Thomas Janudlo Sr. That's from Charles and Sarah, Tom and Christy Janudlo, and Sonia Janudlo. So you continue to pray for Sarah and her family and the loss of her dad. Okay, do you have some? Well, I have a few announcements for the youth this morning. Uh, we will have our teen church tonight, so we, uh, we've just only been having a few come out, so we would ask you to come out tonight at 6.30 uh, for that. Uh, I have the sign-up for the 2021 mission team up now. Uh, let me say this. All right, we only have room for 10 slots this year, okay, because of the vans and the size. And so uh, the sign-up will be first come, first serve, but please hear me. The ages are 13 to 19, and the sign-up sheets out here on the youth bulletin board, please read the requirements before you put your name on there, okay? Please read the requirements. And we want people that are serious and that are committed. If you sign up right now to just get your name on there and decide, well, I just don't want to go, you knock somebody else out of going. So please, uh, we want you to sign up, but we want you to be committed if you do sign up. So that sign-up's out there, and all the instructions and what we're going to require for that this year. We're doing things a little bit different, and uh, so that's there. So I have 10 slots for ages. you got to be 13 by the time we go uh, to 19 by the time we go. And so if you'll sign up for that, that's out there. Uh, we are planning right now to start our Master Club program beginning uh, the second Wednesday in October, October 14th. It's going to run from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. It's going to coincide with uh, the uh, Bible study time. And so, uh, parents, uh, you will be asked to bring your kids straight to their class where they had class last year, is uh, uh, where they're going to have class this year. If you have any questions about that, see me. And uh, so you have to drop them off. And you have to pick them up at that class. They're not going to be running around the church when we're done. And so uh, we ask you to do that for our social distancing. And that being said, uh, we're going to start registering for Master Club every Sunday in September. And so starting uh, the first Sunday there in September and every consecutive Sunday, we'll have a table set up and we ask you that you please register your child so we know how many books to have and badges and all those things to order. And so we would ask you to please sign up for that. And uh, that being said as well, we need some men volunteer helpers. 
uh, especially for our fourth through sixth grade boys class. Right now, I have one leader for that class, and I need some helpers, and preferably some men helpers. And so we have a lot of ladies. We thank God for that, and uh, but we need some men to kind of step up and help. And so in order to run the program, we've got to have help. So we're asking you to do that and uh, to be there uh, for those saints. And until then, until October uh, that we start, we're going to continue. Uh, we've moved our live stream from Astro Club to 6 o'clock on Wednesdays. And so until then, we would encourage you to watch via live stream. So remember to register. Uh, uh, you young people, teenagers, uh, come to teen church. That's going to be one of the requirements for the mission team. And then uh, if you're 13 to 19, please read the rules and then sign up. Okay, first come, first serve for the mission trip. Thank you. All right, I do have one item of business that I need to take care of. Betty Quick Lockhart. Is anybody, how many knows Betty? Anybody here know Betty? I know two or three of you know Betty. Betty has uh, been coming to church here pretty regularly until these things start happening. Betty is probably, uh, how old? Tom, do you know? I don't think she's, I think she's near 90, maybe in, close to 90. 89, 90, maybe even be 90. And Betty has been, was coming for a while, and she's unable to come right now. Uh, she has asked for church membership in this church. And I sent her the needed information, and she filled it out and sent it back to us. And uh, so, uh, um, so what I'm asking today, she said, Betty's not here uh, uh, but she wants to be a member of this church. She listens faithfully, and uh, she uh, just likes the church. And so today, I told her we'd do this. She, we, I talked to her on the phone, and uh, that we would, as a church, uh, take her into membership like we always do everybody else. And, uh, and I talked to her. She's been saved and baptized for years, and uh, so very faithful lady. Uh, to the Lord. So what I want us to do today is stand to receive Betty Lockhart into our fellowship. Amen. Thank you much for that, and we'll let her know that. And uh, and she said you can still remain standing. We're going to be dismissed. Uh, she um, uh, said she's going to try to get back here, hopefully soon. So, uh, uh, you know, you have to be careful. I understand that. And so, so you pray for Betty. She's doing good. She's doing well. But she's up in years, and uh, she likes the church. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. Have I missed anything in the way of announcements? Probably. But anyway, uh, just try to keep up with us if you can. Okay, church tonight, 630. Hope you'll be back. And uh, come and join with us this evening. And uh, it, is, it is the Lord's Day. Amen. Amen. Let's look the Lord and be dismissed. Our Father, thank you, God, for being with us today and helping us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your sweet presence. Thank you for the precious word of God. Lord, make us strong. Make us bold. Father, to stand in the day of uncertainty. Father, we pray for lost people. Pray they'll be saved. Lord, thank you for these that's been here today. Give them safety as they go home. Father, we ask you, Lord, to build a hedge around them, protect them. Lord, keep them safe. Bring us back here at the next appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.